So now we get to the point where we're actually going to be reading the book. Ideally, you've watched the last two episodes of the series. The first covering how to structure your study, and the second covering how to effectively choose books. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to read the book cover to cover, or read the part that you need cover to cover. And you're not going to bother stopping to try and figure out certain things. You're just going to read, read, read. It doesn't matter if it's something highly technical. It doesn't matter if it's something that isn't. You're just going to read it cover to cover. And as you do this, you're going to ask yourself the questions and ask the book the question. What are you about? What are your main parts? Uh, when you can understand something, are you true in whole or in part? And what's the significance of what is being said? Now, what you're going to want to not do is just read it the once. This is a stupid mistake that I used to make. I used to read, say, a platonic dialogue once and then just try and pass through the whole corpus very quickly. This doesn't develop your understanding. It just means that you're ticking off boxes on a to-read list. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the people who try and read 52 books in a year, unless you're reading relatively easy books to understand, or you're reading relatively short books, it's going to be very difficult to really get understanding if you do that. So this is for a different video. So what you do is you do this initial inspective reading as Adler calls it, and you'll probably have a pretty good idea of the book. And ideally, you'll have a great deal of questions to ask the book. So this could be things like, what do certain technical terms mean? Uh, what is the aim of the book? What is the problem that the author is trying to solve? This could be, well, I've come across this piece of text that I don't really understand the point of, or I don't really understand the argument that he's making. I need to go back and sort it out. And then what you do is that, with any luck, you'll have notes on where you found interesting stuff or questions that you had to answer about the whole works, and then you just go back through the work and you answer those questions. Also, if in your attempts to discern what the terms mean, you have issues. So ideally, if you're trying to find out what the author means by a certain word, what you'll do is you will take a pencil, underline every instance the word is used in, try to figure out how many different ways the author is using it, and then separate them on context and try and come to a decision on what they use, right? That, like what they mean by a certain word. Now, if this fails, that's when you consult a commentary. So, for example, with Romans, right? very contentious document amongst Catholics and Protestants. You might want to go and consult various commentaries to help you understand what the text actually means. So you might want to read St. John Chrysostom, St. Thomas Aquinas, and if he has one, just for the sake of argument, St. Robert Bellamy. Right? You might want to go through these authors and see what they had to say. And you might want to go and see through various internet resources that we have where the particular verses are cited and from there you can discern what in the tradition this particular verse means in scripture. And you can do something similar with a lot of other works as well. So Plato, he has commentaries. Aristotle, he has commentaries. William Shakespeare, same thing. They all have commentaries. If you have problems understanding a certain thing, these can help elucidate what is actually meant. Another thing that you might want to do after you've done this initial analysis is to engage in a thematic reading of the text. Now, this would mean you pick a certain thing from the text and see how it's expressed. So, for example, suffering, or slavery, or something like this. Now, this is in fact the way that I understand that Roman Catholic liturgy talks about scripture in its masses. So, it's clearly a very effective method of teaching about the actual truth of the scriptures. And you can do the same thing, certainly with literary works, and I would be very surprised if you couldn't do the same thing with certain philosophers like Aristotle or Plato. So what you would do in that case is that you might recall where you saw certain topics raised, and so what you would do is that you would form out a bunch of questions to do with the theme that you want to explore, and you know roughly where these places that contain this text are, and you just read them all together in concert and see what comes up. Perhaps sit and meditate on it for a little bit. And from there, you will have found information on that theme. A particularly useful tool for this kind of thing is something called a concordance, which, so far as I understand, only exists for scripture, 
although I would be very surprised if they don't exist for other classical literature. And basically what it does is it takes instances where words come up in scripture and it gives you the verses where it's presented. Now, you could choose a certain theme, say for example the word suffering, and this book, or on my resource, will provide you with all of the places where suffering is mentioned, and then from there you can read around the text and discover what the theme actually means. You could also do this in a certain sense with uh, practical books as well. Uh, like for example, say you have multiple books on programming in a certain language, you might want to compare how they teach a particular concept to get a deeper understanding of that concept so you'll be a better programmer. As a final note, you're going to really want to take your time with this. No shooting through books. You should probably, for a platonic dialogue, or a Pauline epistle, or maybe one of the shorter prophetic books of the Old Testament, you want to be spending at least three, four days on these. Because you really want to extract from the text what you can. You really want to whack away at it. And you should probably dedicate the first day or so to reading the work and maybe reading it a couple of times again to answer your own questions. So what I want to make clear here is that you really should take your time. Just sprinting through the great works of Western literature isn't going to make you a smarter person. It'll give you some ideas. It's better than nothing, but it's not the most efficient use of time and it's certainly not the most efficient way of gathering wisdom. So in the fourth video, we will talk a lot more about retaining this wisdom in our minds in a way that's easily accessible so that all of this hard work doesn't go to waste. Thanks for watching.